Has cancel culture gone too far? It's not a new question, but it's a fairly new concept here in the Treasure Valley. Spent the afternoon trying to come up with something or someone locally that has been canceled because of something they said or a political point of view and couldn't really come up with one. Some would say, though, that what's happening with Big City Coffee in Boise is just that. They're still serving lattes and lunch at their Linen District location, but just this week they closed down their library location on the Boise State campus. Here's what we know that has happened. Big City Coffee was invited to open at BSU late last spring to replace the outgoing Starbucks. Sarah Fenley, the big city owner, decided even during a pandemic that this was a good idea, so she opened on September 4th. Well, last week, someone posted on Snapchat a picture of the coffee shop on campus, encouraging students to stay away since Big City is a big supporter of police and the thin blue line. Well, Sarah took issue with that. She responded with a screenshot of that post. You can see it right here, explaining why she supports police. Basically, because of her fiance, Kevin Holtry. He's the Boise police officer that was left paralyzed after being shot on duty almost four years ago. Thursday last week, Sarah was called to a meeting with the school administrators, and by Monday, Big City Coffee, Big City Coffee's campus location was closed. Of course, it's not that simple. Never is. What Holtry told us today was that Sarah was unaware of a pushback to her opening on campus by members of the Inclusive Excellence Student Council, which is part of the Associated Students of BSU. And apparently, for some time now, they've made their frustrations known that Big City was even invited to open on campus in the first place, based on that blue uh, line flag that they fly on their Grove Street location. And unfortunately, the essence of all that entails these days. This is from the minutes of the September 9th IESC meeting. I'm going to read it to you here. We're supporting an organization that blatantly supports the thin blue line, and every black person I know has stories of being treated unfairly at this place, although no evidence was put forth on that. I believe they should have never been brought to campus, and if it can be reversed, it should be. Not reversing it sends a statement across campus. There should be more marginalized student voices on this. You need to find a way to cancel this contract because every marginalized student knows about this affiliation, and that is a dangerous place. Again, no evidence was brought forth to back that up. Meanwhile, Amanda said, I agree with everything that has been said with Chick-fil-A, BPD, and now Big City Coffee. It has sent a message that the campus does not support Black Lives Matter. If there is a way to reverse this decision, it should be done. If they come to campus, it is sending a very harmful message. Well, these sentiments all culminated with that Snapchat post with Sarah defending her right to fly a blue line flag, which led to that meeting last week at BSU's administration building. In attendance was Alicia Etsy from uh, Esty, excuse me, from Boise State President Dr. Marlene Trump's office and Leslie Webb. She was also in attendance, who's the vice president of student affairs, which is basically the go between for student organizations and administration. Kevin Holtree, he told us today he asked to go along with Sarah to that meeting and by the end of it, Big City Coffee was on its way out. Some say pushed out, but the university told us today Big City Coffee was not a victim of cancel culture. They were not sent packing by a small contingent of students looking to silence their voice. We invited them um, when Sarah was had a blue line flag in her downtown store. So I don't think there's any question that there was there was an invitation to them as a valued local vendor. And and I don't know what was said at that meeting, but I know what our central core values are, is that we want people to be able to express what they believe and express what they're committed to. That's what a university is for. You can see how this is being played out though as a small contingent of Boise State student body is pushing a business out because of their views on a certain subject and how that's being played out as a cancel culture kind of thing. What do you say to that? that a small group of people are directing the way the university is running its business. But they didn't direct the way the university ran its business. A small group of people was perfectly welcome as any small group of people are. I'm hearing from a lot of people who are expressing their support for Big City Coffee right now. Our students, our you know, folks on our staff, of course people are welcome to express their views, just like Big City Coffee was welcome to express theirs those students have a right to their freedom of speech as well. In your statement the the, the school put out yesterday, um, Boise State was working with the owner to find successful resolution to the concerns regarding free speech on campus. What kind of things were they working towards? What were you working towards? 
I know that um, there had been conversations in inviting the students into dialogue and in inviting an opportunity for there to be dialogue. Um, universities often are at the very heart of those kinds of dialogues. Um, sometimes people misunderstand and think that universities um, are only pulling in one direction. We're just the place where those really vexed conversations occur. And Brian, right now in this culture and in this country, there's a very, very pitched disagreement about what's happening in policing. And there are enormous tensions about that. And we wanted to be a part of there being a conversation about that. But I also understand there's a lot of hurt and pain in these conversations on both sides. And we can't force people to talk with each other when they're not ready. We can, we can provide a space for that dialogue in that conversation, but we also can't force people to talk who aren't ready to talk. How do you feel about, about the way this kind of ended up with them just saying, we're out, we don't want anything to do with it? Do you know, I feel like this whole situation has been heartbreaking and I think it is a microcosm of the tensions we're seeing play out in the culture at large. This grieves me as not just an, an academic who studies how people can learn to communicate better, but as a leader of a university where one hopes that what we can do is invite all these perspectives into conversation with each other, meaningful, real conversation with each other. Of course, those conversations didn't really go anywhere. And Dr. Trump told me she spoke with Sarah and Kevin over the weekend, but their mind was already made up to leave and be let out of their contract with the school. Of course, being open to a conversation is a different take than what Sarah and Kevin felt over last week or so. Kevin told us today Sarah had no idea how much her coffee shop was being discussed in student council meetings until they all went to that meeting last Thursday. And it was my understanding we were going to sort of have this discussion about this post. Like there was two opposing groups, like there was a uh, anti-color group that wanted her there and a uh, BLM structured IESC group that didn't want her there. And this Leslie Webb was in the middle trying to keep all groups. And Sarah went, hold up a second. This is the first time I've ever heard of this. I mean, it, it really was the first time. She'd never even met this woman prior to this meeting. And Sarah said to her, will you put out a statement that I'm part of the Boise State family and that I'm here to stay. And if they want to spend their, some, their money somewhere else, that's all right. I get it. However, I need to know that you'll support me. And it was crickets. And I, I mean, that second I go, holy cow, they're not going to do it. That's when the president's assistant leaned back in her chair and said, well, apparently this is the point we've come to where we need to agree that we're going to separate our agreement at Boise State. That's not verbatim, but it's to that effect. And Sarah said, absolutely. Closed her binder. We all stood up and we left. And she said, if I had known that this was going on behind the scenes before I opened my doors on September 4th, if I had known, I never would have done it. I would have pulled the plug then. I would have been gone because she just doesn't want to go through this again. It's very damaging. It's very, it's very devastating. And there's not one piece of memorabilia, not one, that supports the police, not a blue, no support your local cop. So the, nothing, not one flag, nothing at that Boise location. There's never been one incident there. But now all of a sudden, everybody's scared because of, you know, these inflammatory messages and, and social media posts. Is it true uh, the Boise State put out a statement last night that said the owner requested to be let out of the contract? Totally not true. Well, I mean, yes and no. I mean, they're obviously skewing it that way. But I, I, again, as I mentioned earlier, they she sat there and said, well, this I think is a time we've come to where we're kind of at loggerheads where we just need to both mutually agree to go our separate ways. And Sarah said, absolutely, I'm, I'm not staying here. I guess then my next question is, you feel like Sarah and Big City Coffee was pushed out of Boise State by a small contingent of people at Boise State? Absolutely. 110%. That is exactly what happened. You can read it yourself. I sat there in that meeting. I listened to them. And what they said, I, I it, it still blew my way. The blue line flag. What do you feel? How do you feel about that being co-opted by groups or being seen by some fringe groups as kind of a, a symbol of anti-BLM or whatever, or being co-opted by that? I'm really confused on, on a high level as of 
really how it happened or why I get and I tell people this about being a cop. I said, there is always room for improvement. I've said this a million times. We can do better at what we do. Every business in the world, yours included, I don't care if it's a sheet metal shop, you always try to be more efficient and to be better. And I think that's the way law enforcement works. It's almost trendy now. It's trendy to hate the police. Like we get together in a briefing and we collude that we're going to go out and try to kill a person of color today. I don't think there's ever been a shooting involving an African-American in the history of Boise Police Department. But yet I'm a racist just because I put my life on the line. I was shot by a person of color. I don't hate him. He was just a bad guy. That's the way it is. And so I take it personally knowing I'm never going to walk again. I don't have a left leg. I'm in chronic pain. I got shot in the stomach. I got shot in the hip. I got my right femur blown up. I have a steel rod running through my leg. And so, uh, yeah, you know what? It is a little personal to me. We tried to reach out to members of the Inclusive Excellence Student Council today, but we have yet to hear back. Big City Coffee has been getting a lot of support lately, by the way. Stopped by this morning, there was a line out the door, and it doesn't take a genius to figure out this is all just a microcosm of society these days. Everybody talking over each other, not really listening to what the other one has to say. The school insists they asked nothing of Big City Coffee to stay on campus. Kevin Holtry insisting the school refused to support them in staying. A victim of cancel culture? Well, like a lot of things these days, depends on who you ask.